Turn over your cards. All right. And he started calculating, and they talked yes. for a while, and then they just did a, you do this on your turn, you do yes. this on your turn, you do this on your turn, boom, boom, and it just turned into a machine. Yeah. And everybody got really excited about the solve, right? That they'd made a system that then worked. And that we, did, we did that. So we changed, Ivan had the idea, or he just did it, and said, I'm going to do it. Right. Yeah. And I feel, I feel that the, the game was more fun mm -hmm. after we knew... Because then it's a G. Is it then the first player that gets seven? Right. It was like a clear, okay, I give you... To like do the this. last one, we knew exactly I give you one because you can do that. I give you two, right. because then you can do that. So, so then it's like a puzzle, to, right? So this is something that I wanted, I asked Ken to build into the game, that people would only start to realize this part of the way through the game. I wanted people to start believing at the beginning that you have to keep them private, and then if you get clever, you figure out, oh, if we actually like collaborate and share our goals, we can actually get more points for the whole team, and we can optimize for everybody's individual goals for the benefit of the team. And um, so we're still kind of working out how we can better communicate that, because we, we say that it's private goals, but I don't know if there's a like a, a better way to... If you are the saboteur inside the game, then it makes sense to have a private. <laughs> but yes. as long as the team is working as a team, it doesn't really make sense to... See, so that could be a facilitated version where you give someone uh, like the special secret instructions. Yeah, he's like lying with the James of West. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could give even bonus points if everybody achieves their goal. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. give points That's for ooh, ooh, one okay. individual yeah. goal that is achieved. And that might prompt people to... That, made, that, that would have yeah. cost me even more to think about yeah. that everybody should, and how can we achieve that everybody does. But yeah. I honestly believe, yes, there is a software in there. So you believe what's I believe that when we, when we all looked at it, yeah. that somebody will have a negative for the team card. Like, your goal is that the Rhino doesn't make it. Oh! oh. I probably played, played too much Saboteur with, with <laughs> Gobor. Did I ever remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a game specifically about that. Yeah, there's that spy game goal. as well, right? Yes, and so... I really believe there is one there. Huh. So when you started... You saying let's do it. You I thought that, that you are the saboteur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Maybe, maybe that could work. I mean, the, the kind of the idea was supposed to be that the that the rhino was the metaphor for the client, because everybody's got an interest in seeing them succeed, and um, but if you have kind of a competitor amongst your amongst your team or something like that, that might help. Okay, so although just to just. So the metaphorical situation is this reflects work somehow, right? Between clients and projects and whatever. And I have had colleagues who didn't contribute much to getting stuff done, but I don't know how many of us have worked with someone who's actually trying to destroy what we're doing. Like, I'm not... I only hear about that. Right. <laughs> uh, in this game, if you actually want to destroy the team, it's very easy. Yeah. You have to just step in the RP trail and uh, yeah. wait. Yeah. And the, the, the team has to be... Right, yeah. and, and you yeah. take rest turns, and the yes. race goes up, and you're, and, 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 uh, and you're done. You get energy, so you can mm. use it afterwards. I and if the team tries to build vacation. around you, and if the team tries to build around you, you can move straight ahead to another point. <gasps> Checkmate! Yes, it's very easy. That, uh, okay. Honestly, yeah. I think got the analogy that the rhino is defined. No. No. Is that something that right? we it doesn't? It's a team goal. Yeah. No, no. Course. I don't think. It, I don't think. It, I don't think it should That's be explicit. Super. Okay. I think that you have, especially if we figure out a mechanism for moving your player across the board. You have that goal. You have your blue card goal. You have the rhino thing that you have to achieve. You have scoring incentives, and then you know it feels yeah. kind of like a real situation. Or an analogy, you know? So, so, so the I range is the time range you have that you deliver on time, or what is that? On, and what is the well, first then, player on an analogy? Um, I think that's just a mechanism to be able yeah, to like shift around resources okay. and distribute resources. Um, similar in it's a company, a certain departments get different budgets. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the range meter is design. definitely the range meter is definitely a time is a timer. It seems like sprints Pressure. to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So ah. sprints. Kind of, you know, it's like every turn and your rage meter moves up, it's... Yeah, but you have the problem that you, and you also have the thing with the, the traps and the stuff that you, you don't lose the it, It's like, you know, somebody fell ill and you lost 
sprints worth of productivity you know it's like kind of out there but i mean i'm not saying it's like an exact match to sprints it's mm. just a thought so we saw as jam was describing um the role that a project manager uh jumped in and took and we heard some comments at the beginning about front end developers and the way that they think was there anybody that felt like in their role or or amongst their team that people were behaving in different ways or had a different perspective based on the <coughs> the role that they normally play in the company especially at this table did you guys feel like you were at work no <laughs> to, to be honest not really I mean, <laughs> no that i <laughs> it took me some time to, to understand the game yeah. in the beginning. I, I'm not a, um, a game player at all. So um, maybe if you, if, you, okay. if you played again and then maybe again, I would step into, into a project manager role. But, but Actually, now it I was thought it's, it's like we always do. We, we try to resolve stuff uh, together. 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 Yeah. 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 If somebody yeah. doesn't reach his personal goal, um, yeah, sometimes we just uh, take that. Yeah. Uh, so another thought that we had. Um, for taking this to make it part of a workshop day. Um, I feel it's a great vehicle for getting people talking and communicating in, in a compact amount of time. You know, we can take an hour as facilitators of workshop, take people who think they know each other, set up some tables, have a discussion, and then do this. And I think that the room is really warmed up to have you know, more conversations, and it's at least somewhat relevant to the kinds of companies we're in, right? Um, we were wondering if it were relevant or interesting to make a version that you could you could skin visually for your own company or your own whatever, and if it would make any sense to have a possibility to put in your own kind of like problems and challenges rather than this abstract thing, but like whether that would be interesting. I'm not convinced, but it's come up. What, yeah. This is what I wanted to ask. I mean, the game is fun, but thinking about replayability, which is what a game is, uh, I don't currently see a company spending 30 minutes on let's take a break and play this game. I don't think this is a take it home and play it every Friday night game. Either. No, not even for a company played in 30 minutes just to, you know, uh, relax or something. I can see it working in a workshop, for example, with you people guiding them, and yeah. in that case the rules must be simpler for people to understand in a very short amount of time. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, but after the workshop or after a um, uh, consulting session with a client, I don't see it working currently. Right. No, so my view, I think that maybe, maybe you know, you can play it twice and have it interesting um, unless we come up with these pre-set up scenarios where play scenario A, which is heavy conflict, and scenario B is the rage meter moves twice as fast and, you know, stuff like that. But the end game is not for the Rhino to move and for the team to win. The end game is to actually get the team members in conflict and get them solve the conflict themselves. That's what the consumptive part of the game looks mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. uh, well, right. The actual goal of the game is this conversation. Yes. <laughs> exactly. I think the game is an enabler, not yeah. the thing you want to play, keep on playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. meant to facilitate this yeah. discussion. So and losing is actually. A, a very good outcome. Losing the game is a yeah. very good outcome for yeah. the for the team or for the company. Yeah. Potentially, um, I think that the not wanting to lose is a nice motivator as well to like pull everyone together in the last three or four turns, right? Mm -hmm.